Okay, so Blue Oolong, episode two, Hack the Planet. And Lou, do you want to give a, a recap? Because you, you wrote some yeah. stuff up. Yeah, I wrote a little recap thing. I'll um I'll paste it into the chat thing too, in case you can't understand my um friendly monotone. Um maybe I won't because it's too big to put in there. Okay. Um it's just a few paragraphs. In the Roots district of Shelter One, a small gang of Y advice dealers are using the blue oolong tea shop as a front for their new operation. Customers of the Blue Oolong can glimpse the as yet unnamed gang meeting in the back room through the gently swaying bead curtain. I'm imagining these um, names flashing up on the screen as I read them in some cool font. Silver, a grizzled ex-corporate mercenary, thin and silver-haired. J5, a washed out former child TV star, mad inventor and saboteur. Whisper, a hacker of storms a gangly traveller. Haboob, a caravan garden bandit, born in the desert, hooded and veiled. We cut to the crew emerging from a smouldering conch shell shaped tent high in the skyline of the Basin District. An act of God is in progress, a building sized whirlwind of sand and fire. They crab walk through fierce winds across the rooftop, joined by ropes seeking to deploy their windsock device and extract rare components from the heart of the storm. Components that can be cooked and modified into the good stuff, a highly efficacious and valuable, a highly efficacious and valuable drugs. The fire is an unforeseen complication to an otherwise flawless plan. The sandstorm gathering up the flames as they burst to life inside broken buildings. These flames must be doused before the storm can be tapped without damaging the fragile distillation equipment within the windsock. The crew bust into the water mains and J5 employs a device, some kind of field generator, creating a water whip funneling into the whirlwind. The flames hiss and steam and they emerge from a hot cloud of mist with their device and the components. Silver guides the confused and panicked crew through the swirling sands and mists, past giant icebergs set to rest and drain in the heart of the basin, along back streets and alleyways, back to the roots and the blue oolong tea shop, to safety. As the storm dissipates, we flash back to the scene of the job. In amongst the broken buildings and ruptured water mains, a team of tracers are combing over the site with forensic attention to detail, scanning all surfaces and collecting samples. This will likely have severe consequences. Clean water is rare and valuable, and the corporate Congress do not take wanton waste of resources lightly. Wow, so good. <laughs> cool. Incredible. That's a dangerous precedent to set. <laughs> <laughs> now, now every time we'll be like, so, Lou, <laughs> Sweet. if you can give me that, I'll put it in the YouTube uh, description thing, too. Yeah, sweet. I'll um, paste it in our little Slack um, private chat thing. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So the last thing that we saw was you, like, holding up that cool, um, like, whatever it was that you had uh, obtained from the tornado, right? I don't think anyone um, ever really like described what it was. It was just sort of like a cut, right? Like you were like taking it out and it was gone. Um, so as a general thing with the technology in this game, it's like uh, printed media that people can get a, a their hands on. So it's generally cheap stuff, or you can alternatively use what are called jewels, which is like manual labor that charge these vessels full of energy. And they're usually glowing so that you can see how much charge is in them. And they're like basically the prison of this game uh, in the Ford is where people are sentenced to do manual labor to charge these things. So think very much like the wind up girl and stuff, right? And um, so what I imagine it looking like though is people charging these things that are like malleable glasswork 
uh, stuff when it's still hot and then they can mold it into whatever shape that it's needed so you could make it like a gun clip or something like that and then they would slot the um, the carbon fiber or whatever plastic that stuff is made out of over it and it would use that charge and stuff like that but when it shoots it would look kind of like a sun jet from altered carbon and uh yeah, like the the Netflix altered carbon, the first gun that you ever see in it is the Sunjet, where it shoots like liquid fire stuff, right? So that's that's what it would go with. But uh, all the technology, like the city, all of that stuff is powered by that, as well as other eco friendly things like carbon sinks and uh, windmills and stuff like that. But what everybody can see above the city is that everything has solar panels that get angled with the sun. And that is also to protect the citizens because the sun is like a very, it's a much more hardcore sun, we'll say. <laughs> it'll it'll get you. <laughs> and that's why everybody has screen on them as an item. Uh, basically, it makes you secrete this thing over your skin that allows you to um, bounce the sun off. So it's like you're manufacturing literal sunscreen from your body basically and um yeah so what does this thing look like that you you've manufactured it can look like whatever you want i just wanted to make sure that you were aware of some of the other technologies and stuff like that because it's still you have it in like it's a raw form right you still need to get it transmuted into whatever crazy drug you guys want <laughs> is it gonna be something that you put in tea and stuff or like what is it i was kind of picturing like the stuff we distilled from the storm being some like crystalline like material i guess like yeah um what was that other name that that name we were throwing around for the drug in the last i think we had some sort of cool name or maybe it was a thing I said and I just thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah, acid rain, yeah. I was kind of thinking like that. Um, yeah, like it's condensing something out of the storm into a crystalline form that, you know, can be smashed smashed up and or refined further. Yeah. So like some kind of like unrefined, unrefined like, like uncut, like, but still kind of internally glowing, like gemstone kind of thing. Is that like some kind of like crystalline like structure? Is that what you're talking or, or something else? Yeah, I think so. Because I think it seems like this, um, the weather kind of seems like it has like a slightly arcane sort of thing happening. Like there's something weird about it. Like, yeah. And so I guess that's what we've extracted. We've extracted the weird <laughs> like thing out of the weather. Yeah. And I guess maybe, I guess it's a super, maybe there's not even much of it. It's like a little handful of crystals, but it's like super strong or something. So it's more about, yeah, cutting it down into, into something. Yeah. yeah. So something's like super potent. Okay. Well, let's go through the uh, downtime portion of it. Cause that will maybe give you guys an idea of what you want to do as well. So the first thing that we start off with is payoff. Uh, the crew earns two rep per score by default, uh, higher tier, the more rep. So the thing was three tiers higher than you. So boom, goes the dynamite, with that one. But alternatively, um, you earn zero rep if you are keeping it completely quiet and nobody knows about it. I think that you were of, at first trying to... Uh, keep it on the DL, right? But that last thing I think would give you at least two rep. But I wanted to get your guys' input as to what you what you were thinking because we did we just like hard framed you in there and and stuff, right? So what do you guys think? Were you guys trying to do this in like a you know clandestine sneaky sneaky way, or is this like a thing where you're like we took down a storm, bitches? Because also like since it's much higher tier than you, I would have made that challenge a lot more difficult, but we wanted something like really cool to start off the movie with. And we also had time constraints and stuff like that. Right. So I think um, like 
everybody else knows that it is like a very big deal to take down a fire tornado, right? <laughs> a tornado of anything. I think normally people might have tried that first um, tactic where it was just like siphoning off like a little part of it or something like that or whatever, right? But we went, we went all in. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think? Was this like a, a sh like a show of force to other people and other crews and stuff like that? Or was this sneaky sneaky and the show is that like you'll have this product later, right? Where, um, what was the attribute we put on out? Was it daring that we uh, Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we didn't uh, respect the, um, <laughs> the like size of the thing that we were going after. I think maybe it's that, like, it's, um, like, you know, the stupidity part of, um, bravery. That's what it was for me anyway. <laughs> well, but in terms of like, if you wanted other people to hear about it or not, where do you guys land? Cause that'll, it'll get you more rep, but it's also like easier for people to come calling like tracers and other gangs <laughs> and stuff. Right. If you're like putting the word out there, they're like, yeah, remember that tornado? Mm -hmm. I kind of get the feeling <laughs> that we, we were starting off trying to be sneaky, but then it got big while we were doing it because of having to smash the water mains and all of that kind of stuff. Like, and what do you guys think? Were we starting off sneaky and then being <laughs> massive? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think we started off in that vein, but I think just the way things spiraled out, um, I, I think you know we were a small group trying to be quiet, but there wasn't. It didn't really work out the way we hoped. Is my is my my thought? So if you're gonna if you're gonna own it, then it'll be what five rep, right? Is that what you guys want? That everybody everybody wants. <laughs> That sounds daring. Five rep. Yeah, All right, let's, let's take it. Let's take it. Let's, let's be crazy. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. And then, cred wise, um, you'll have a major score, which is ten plus cred. So we'll say twelve to be exact. I think. Shit, we're gonna get smashed. <laughs> well, 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 you still have to convert that into cred, though, right? Right now, it's like. Well, I guess you could. I, like it, it depends on your <laughs> what you're going to do with the thing but i think you have a thing that is worth 12 cred at the moment and you can cut it or, or do whatever you want um record it on the sheet blah blah, blah. uh i don't think we're gonna pay tithe to the boss just yet i want that to be like a established fictional uh thing who, who's running the roots. So for this one, we'll just call it a freebie, basically before you had to give your rent or whatever to the higher ups. Um, so heat, do you guys think it went smooth and quiet, low exposure, contained standard exposure, four heat, loud and chaotic, high exposure, or six wild, devastating exposure? <laughs> That's pretty right. subtle. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be at least two heat, right? I reckon it was loud, and but it wasn't like there was a storm smashing shit up. Like we didn't do all the damage. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would gauge the spider exposure. Yeah, plus nobody else was really out at the time, right? We were the only ones kind of out in the storm, so I can't imagine it was like the top end. You know, we definitely got some. That's for sure. Um, Yes. I don't know. I, I would. I'd be in the two to four range, but I don't know what you guys think. Mm. Yeah, two is standard. Four is high. Well, I, th I think maybe the combination of the fact that like there were so few people out there, yet we did attract some attention. Maybe that kind of like evens it out to like that two ish. Does that that sound reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, add plus one for high profile or well connected target. Add plus one if situation happened on hostile turf. Um, I think you would have gotten that if the storm wasn't happening. Plus one if you're at war with another faction. Nope. And plus two if you killed people, but you didn't. So there you go. So I think two is fine. Okay. And 
Entanglements. Who wants to roll an entanglement? Let's make Aaron roll it to punish him <laughs> for being away. <laughs> nice. You weren't here for this, but you're fucked. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll to be fucked. Um... <laughs> okay. So your roll uh, after payoff and heat are determined. GM generates an entanglement for the crew using the list below. Find the column that matches, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I can roll it or you can roll it. Roll. Uh, so let's see. Roll number of dice equal to wanted level, so two. Okay. Do I, I guess there's no place on the sheet to do this, so just do this manually? Yeah. yeah. Correct. Five. Cool. That is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> That's good. You guys are good at this game. Good at it for me. <laughs> and I'm sorry, can somebody give me a like a 30 second uh, shorthand of what uh, heat and rep are and if I should be marking something down? Sure. Rep is like your reputation for what you're doing. And you can use it to get turf, to take holdings and stuff, the, the, the little things on your crew sheet. You can do that. Or you can specifically say, I want to use a score to take one of these things as well. That's something you could do. And we got five from that, right? Yeah, yeah, we got that on there. And, that, and all this stuff just goes on the crew sheet, so I'm, I'm, I'm inputting it. Yeah, you guys should share it, right? It should, yeah. Otherwise, it would be weird if everybody had to keep making changes anyway. Um, cool. So also, just so you know, what you got was rivals. So that's that's a thing. And then downtime actions. So you get two downtime actions, and a, you get an additional one if you're doing the thing that your crew is all about on its turf, which you guys selected was supply or sales. I can't remember which. Um, just so you know, it doesn't show up in like our crew part of the sheet, but we can look into um, Jesse's, into Silver's character sheet and oh. like see it all. Yeah, well, it's not in mine anyway. Weird. You would think it would just change it all, but that does sound like a difficult thing <laughs> to do. So it makes sense. Um, but da -da. also, you can spend cred to do more downtime actions and downtime actions are acquire an asset asset uh do a long-term project recover so if you're wounded uh, reduce your heat train which each time you do it you get one xp in whatever thing that you're training up and indulge a vice which is how you will decrease your stress and if you overindulge in your stress that is bad and you can find that on page two of the reference sheet that I gave, I gave you guys. If you want a breakdown of all that stuff and to see if I'm lying about rivals or not, I'm not. So when you overindulge, if I'm remembering it, it's like if you go to minus, like stress, is that right? Like you roll too high and it takes, is that how it works? Uh, so if you overindulge, you clear all your stress, but then something bad also happens from it. You, yeah, it says cool. you, you make a bad call because of your vice in acquiring but it. Or... How, does, how does the overindulging like, activate? When you roll more than the stress that you have. When you're yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So if I've got only two stress, it would probably be dumb to roll right now. Unless you're right? like super into overindulging, yeah. <laughs> It would be it would be intense. <laughs> so I sorry. So I have four stress. Is that something that I should try to clear up? It's like borderline because yeah, like if you roll a five or a six, then you overindulge. But the odds are like on your side ish that you won't. Question: Does uh does trauma work the same as in blades? Like you know, you yeah. get it when you when you get to you know fill up on stress, but then you also get experience for expressing that trauma, right? 
Yes. Yeah. So, so this is something to understand about blades that's kind of interesting. A lot of players will actually go pretty hard on stress early on to try and get their first level of trauma so that they can play it up like <laughs> in role playing to get more experience. <laughs> so up to you. Yeah. If you or you can. If you watch uh, the Vigilantes playtest on Eric Volgaris's thing, I trauma out first episode. <laughs> but I do cool shit. So there's that. Cool. Um, but yeah, so when you take trauma and you embody that trauma, then you'll get XP. But the more traumas that you take, the closer you are to retiring your character overall. And you are also like changing who they are fundamentally. That's the thing to remember as well. <laughs> that would be fun. They're fucked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's see. So keep in mind what you want to do with your downtime actions. Uh, let's do the rival thing first. So we get this scene. Oh, actually, why don't you guys describe your, your place? We didn't get a chance to do that just yet, right? We kind of got like an overview of like, it's a tea shop. And then in the back, uh, <laughs> Lou keeps giving me fictional positioning to come in and see you guys for some reason, because the door is always, always, always open, apparently. And we know that there is a big sort of uh, like, enough for a garage uh, of people to house their cycles on because you took it from constructed chaos, which was pissed. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, overall, give me like, paint me a picture of what this place looks like. And what uh, options I'm being quiet on purpose because I've been talking too much. <laughs> and we know that it is, it has quarters and it, it is secure. And you're yeah. trained to resolve. So for that, I was imagining, I mean, yes, they can kind of see back into the back room and we do a lot of stuff there, but I have to imagine our quarters are like, we've probably got like in that back, there's probably like a hatch going down to like, you know, kind of an un, like a basement type thing where I think the quarters would be. So I have to imagine that's like covered over with a rug usually or something like that, you know, but um, to keep it less conspicuous. But yeah, I have to imagine the workshop in the back, uh, kind of like, you know, the storefront, the, the tea shop, and then probably like it's part of a building that like the other side had been like some kind of, you know, mechanics place or something like that, that we kind of just take over, took over that back part of the building as well. So it's probably got like entrances and stuff in through the back, um, you know, to be able to get in and out, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, I'm imagining kind of like a little, you know, like a metal, um, like, uh, you know, the hatch opens, we got like a metal stair, like not staircase, but like, like ladder kind of going down into like pretty sparsely, you know, decorated bunk area at this point nothing too special but it's secure it's safe we can sleep there where you know people won't even know that we're there but uh i don't know other ideas build on it <laughs> i feel like the so like the tea shop i'm imagining is like one of those hipster places where you can sit down and like enjoy a cup of tea but then they also like sell their own blends and stuff there right because that's what my local hipster tea shop does anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, I feel like it must be kind of like a fragrant place and that on the wall there's like um, shelves where they have bowls of their little blends you could buy. So like you might have like a nice chai that's got lots of like black pepper and cloves and um, other spices I'm blanking on in chai. <laughs> And like vanilla, and you might have like your kind of green or gray, like bergamot, uh, like citrus peel, kind of whatever, or like whatever other cyber tea you get in this kind of place. Yeah, I'm Adam imagining. Star anise, yeah. I'm, I'm totally imagining, you know, like real traditional stuff, but then like right next to it, you'll have jars of something that's just like this crazy, like electric purple kind of color. It's like we have no idea what that ingredient is, you know, but, you know, oh, some totally. blend, blend that we don't have, you know, now or anything. Just, just yeah, classics interspersed with like stuff that's like we, we just wouldn't recognize and kind of obviously. I'm picturing it. You're a stranger. I'm picturing like when you get the Earl Grey with the cornflower like flowers in it too, you get like a little like a like crazy <laughs> genetically enhanced like florals in your tea as well. 
Yeah, I was kind of picturing that like floor to ceiling, like apothecary, like behind the counter, like just, you know, like jars of weird stuff, you know, like a bit Chinese medicine-y, like, you know, um, like gold stones from a sheep and, you know, that sort of like weird stuff. <laughs> like your gunpowder bullets or whatever, like for your green tea and that kind of thing. And yeah. Mm. Have we determined how uh, how we actually make or cook this drug yet? Uh, that's another thing we briefly discussed um, while you were gone was what we actually did harness from the storm was a kind of crystallized um, like component, like condensed weirdness from the storm, essentially. So super concentrated. So we were kind of talking about cutting that like with something, but we haven't really talked about that, how that process works yet. So maybe one way of uh, tying this into our tea shop is that there's a kitchen behind the counter uh, and this this crystalline thing has to actually be cooked, right? Like there's a, like, like there's a, a, a wok that needs to be like, you know, fired <laughs> and, uh, and maybe some of these, um, some of these leaves, some of these, um, uh, spices they get thrown into this mix to create like different formulas for the good stuff. <laughs> I guess we got to figure out kind of what's the delivery system for the good stuff. Like, how are people like ingesting it, taking it, absorbing it? Like, I, I don't know. Any yeah, ideas? That's, that's what I mean. Like, do you have to like get somebody to cut this crystal into tiny little things that you put in people's tea? And then it's like, mm. like, so people are like, I want the good stuff tea right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like cool here's one with like a little tiny crystal at the bottom or something like that and mm. that you perhaps so it's like we... oh i kind of like the idea of this multiple forms you could imbibe it in like maybe you could smoke your tea with it like you get some nice like monoco um branches and this crystal that you smoke with like your tea to sort of like make synthetic um like lapsang or <laughs> that kind of thing um and like well maybe you could just dump it like straight in your tea if you want like a really big hit of it kind of thing i don't I'm know i'm totally i'm um, picturing some old men that are just constantly in the front room of the shop like playing backgammon and um like smoking tea out of like you know like um like the <laughs> yeah, you bro things like <laughs> <laughs> yeah you roll it up and smoke it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, Aaron, were you here when we were talking about rep then? No. Right. No, okay. Sure. So, no worries. So, so you guys as a small team are probably going to aim for twelve rep to increase your tier. Well, increase it from weak to strong to the next tier. I'm assuming. Uh, or you can put it towards getting turf, which gives you other benefits. But um, especially with your organization like tier zero is one or two people so you could you might have like a couple people running the shop and stuff like that right but uh if you go into tier one then you actually have a small gang and uh, some other things happen with that but there's a lot of different uh progress that you can do in this game with varying things but i th think you'll probably want to aim for Tier at least to get a stronghold on your on your place, right? But uh, it's completely up to you. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thanks for catching me up. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Because I um I think the way it kind of works, like you can expand your turf more quickly, but you end up having a super weak like hold over it. Like you're super vulnerable to being taken down if you grow too quickly in that way. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a weak hold on something, then that basically just gives me permission to mess with that particular place. So, you know, <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> and then also you can do scores to target the areas on the um, like little map thing on your crew sheet to get the things that you want, which gives you other bonuses. So there's there's a ton of things to do. And every time you do something, you'll be pissing people off probably <laughs> Woo um but yeah so you can do a whole bunch of different things with this crystal i guess so 
do you guys think that you need somebody to be this like cook for it or no? If we've got one or two people, we could probably get the um the old lady in the shop's gotta be one, right? Surely she can constantly stir a wok for us. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I mean, like as like a cook, as in yeah, yeah, I know. change <laughs> the crystal into whatever <laughs> it is that you're doing. So, yeah, I like I like the cook being an actual cook, like an actual chef. Like there, it's not just about collecting, but actually like making this good, right? Like there's there's uh, recipes, but there's also like you know, this is my dad's recipe for the good stuff, right? It's my my grandmother's recipe. That's didn't we talk about it last time that there was a, there was a character I'm looking on the cruise sheet right now Viti V E E T I an alchemical cook that we were using for it I just remembered that I think that was already a thing we had talked about like there the person's a contact of ours but not technically in the gang at the moment so that's kind of a weak point in our organization right now I, is that does that ring a bell or, is that, or am I making that up Yeah that's a thing that's why I'm wondering like just the way that you guys were explaining it, I wasn't sure if you were trying to go for fictional positioning where you didn't need a cook or, mm. or not, right? Because you're like, oh, it's just crystals. We just cut the crystals and people just get that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we still need somebody to like process it before it can be like, you know, to cut it before we can make the tea with it or something. That would make sense to me. Yeah, it would be like, bringing raw diamonds to someone who cuts the actual diamonds, right? The whatever those people are called. Yep. <laughs> cool. And for you, that's VD, right? But let's do the entanglement then. So how is it that you guys are notified when customers uh, come in? Is it like, is there some sort of futuristic thing that notifies people? Surely it's just a bell right at the door. <laughs> you guys are so <laughs> fucking hipster. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sorry. Maybe it's got sorry, you go. I was gonna say maybe it's not like a, a physical bell, but like a chime that just rings in everybody's ear. So like if you weren't oh. connected, like no one would there's no sound out in the world, but but everybody has this sort of like connection. <laughs> That'd be cool too if the old lady at the counter had it so she could just spookily appear when people like enter the shop with like no sound happening. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, well, you, you hear this bell thing, and then so who is we should name this old lady, and right, if she is manning the shop, and <laughs> we mentioned her as the old lady enough, probably. Maybe uh, Vidi is the old lady. Well, but so she's like work she she just comes to work for you to do that sometimes and she just happens to be doing it now yeah okay sure yeah i like that too okay um yeah so bd is like i guess slicing it or something like that uh beside the, the register or something like that right <laughs> like who who's manning the shop i guess is what, I, what i'm wondering would it be one of you guys or is it like, do you have a minion or, or whatever, somebody that you pay well because capitalism <laughs> behind the thing? Or do I you think, think it is v Vidi? Yeah, I think Vidi is just like the, the all around, like sh she does everything, right? She, <laughs> nice. she like, sees to our, like, you know, she sees to our quarters. She, you know, cooks the, uh, she cooks the stuff. She runs the tea shop. Um, yeah. Viewer is a jack of all trades. Okay, so she's That's a contact in that she's a paid employee. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sounds good. So the doorbell chimes, and what I'm picturing in my head is like, uh, at first we would get a look of the duds, which is if you've seen like Black Panther, the stuff that Jordan, um, what's his name, Jordan, the bad guy, the Killmonger guy, Michael it, B. Jordan. Yeah, 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 Jordan, yeah. Um, it, where when he's like in the um, uh, museum and you get that tracking shot going in, it's the same sort of um, configuration of clothing except for the hair where it's the side swept thing. It's like got a whole bunch of like wires and tubes and stuff like that that are attached instead to make it sort of like it's literally like junk wear I think is is in right now. Um, and as it turns, 
you you get the impression that like they're like quite built and all this stuff and you think that it's going to be a man but instead it's a woman and they have other than the cable like hair it's blonde and um quite built and what do i have for tags for them i have capable and savvy is how they look on screen and i think they are like what well, i think she is grabbing i'm picturing it like a normal tea shop where there's like all those tins and you can like open them and smell them and like all that and i think she's doing that but we get like a sense of unease like maybe it's at the beginning of the dark night when they're pulling off that job and there's that slow rising in the music where it's just like like the hair in your ear is dying <laughs> what, what that sounds like right um and maybe one of you like are walking by and vd is just like doing what vd does right like like helping but not helping i think like i think you pay her just enough to give a little bit of fucks but not all of them <laughs> um and one of you move uh like through the doorway that is fairly over always open anyway and you see um this person whose name is uh tamar and you know that they're a member of constructed chaos one of the people that maybe maybe when you were negotiating with this place you knew that constructed chaos had been um because we established that you guys kind of like pushed them out of this place right so maybe at some point you knew them or you made it your business to know what some of the ranking members look like just so if they did come calling exactly like this right now then you would know what is uh what is going on so what uh, what do you do Who is it of us that's looking through the um, bead curtain? Up to you. Who do you think? <laughs> Who hasn't got much screen time? Let's do that. I feel like it makes sense a bit Sylvia because Sylvia's kind of like our military. Like I feel like she's way more onto it uh, in that capacity. Yeah. So I'm picturing myself kind of like casually leaning with my back against like the, the door, like the, the edge of the door there, you know, I got arms crossed, you know, kind of legs crossed over the other. And I'm just kind of like glancing over at this person through like, and I've got this like, you know, clear, like, you know, like, uh, fr you know, like frameless, you know, like glass, uh, you know, like glasses that don't have any, you know, just like a mono glass. And I think I'm just kind of like peeking, you know, kind of out of the corner of my eye right now, just trying to like figure out what's up with this person. Mm hmm um i think they were just sort of posturing around to make themselves known so that they could engage with a, a dialogue mm -hmm. and i don't know do you guys is there like a vernacular for underground people that they would use that would be like um something that they could say to you that would be like i want to talk in a room that isn't like bugged or or whatever do you like do people in this area and general underground people uh know a way to contact you guys like that or is it just like you guys are so new that this has there's, there'd yet. probably be some sort of hand signal or something right for if it's a bug like trying to speak in a clean clean area you'd think even maybe like everyday citizens might have like a signal for that. I'm actually imagining I've got an, I got an idea. So we've got this incredibly intense sun out there, right? I imagine it's like this kind of like keyword kind of thing of someone, you know, they come inside and they're like, you know, the, just mentioned that the sun is incredibly intense today and they needed to come and get, get in the shade. And I think that's, that's, you know, kind of a keyword for getting out of, you know, intensely watched areas into somewhere that's a little more clandestine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they do that, and then would would you guys accept that proposition from her, knowing that she's from constructed chaos and there might be some animosity? You guys are negative one or negative two? Uh, okay. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah. Uh, we definitely are not friendly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're at negative two. Um, I think so. If 
I'm hanging out kind of in the in the you know basically you know right up against the door jam where the bead curtain is. I think I I do a quick peek back to make sure that like uh, the hatch to our quarters are you know covered you know like closed covered up. Um, other than that, it's a pretty nondescript room. I don't think there's anything too exciting happening back there, you know, like that's overt um, and nothing else super noticeable other than just like the entrance into the back, you know, a workshop area. Right. I think, Which yeah, so I think, the garage, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think I do a quick peek to check and make sure that everything's relatively, you know, normal back there. And, and I kind of just motion with my head back and I just kind of hold the beads, you know, to the side to mm. let them go, go through. And maybe, maybe her signal to VD or something as she takes like one of the expensive tees and slides it along the corner and says like can you get that ready to go and it's like some exorbitant amount that would take her like a while to process or something like that right be like some something crazy like like you go into David's tea and be like I'll take 600 grams of this one right like we don't fucking have 600 grams of it right <laughs> like <laughs> and if we do then you're an asshole this is gonna take a while so it's like that. <laughs> so VD kind of gives like a eye roll and like a fucking my life. And you guys go back to this, <laughs> uh, the, the workshop. And she says, I wouldn't be here unless I had to. You know that, right? My, my people have a beef with you, but I owed somebody else a favor. I think I just kind of almost roll my eyes at them and I say, words are cheap, you know, tell me what you want. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, she takes out a, have, have you ever seen a saffron flower? It's like blue. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a, uh, it's blue and I'll have to Google an image of it. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, what what's really what they're known for is the stems inside of it. They're like really hard to um, to get at. I'll send you a picture here. It's a really uh, pretty flower, to be honest. A friend gave me a little um, chest of it um, once, and it's actually like worth more than its um, weight in gold saffron. So it's like a really generous gift. I was cooking it with everything i was having like saffron eggs and like <laughs> exactly yeah so um that's what it looks like it there's three six petals there's like a yellow uh two little yellow protruding things from the center of the flower and then there's three red stems and that's the part that is very valuable and used in a lot of cooking and stuff like that but in this setting it's actually like pretty uh, dirt cheap because it's the only thing that you can saffron is interesting because it grows pretty much wherever like if somewhere can't be seeded saffron will usually grow there so it's a really good import right now for uh middle eastern countries with like really bad ground they'll grow fields and fields of saffron and they'll make like quite a bit of money um and it is also there's a whole bunch of other health benefits and stuff like that but um it's grown a lot in the foundation which is the area that is very close to the three center towers uh, nourish safety and information the three like corporate congress big big dogs kind of thing and um it's also the sign of not really like a a gang but it's like kind of a gang and it's the they're the croci uh, stigma which is just the name of the the saffron flower and she says that i'm not sure you being new here and she like puts a fierce enunciation on new <laughs> as she looks around the the workshop that should have been a warehouse for their cycles <laughs> but um the croci need a job done and I'm their messenger today because I owed them. And I don't know if you're taking work after your, I don't know, I think five rep, they probably have guessed that you're the ones behind the, the tornado, right? And she's like, I don't know if you're taking work so soon after being in pauses for like a pregnant moment, busy. <laughs> but they need something done. Uh, they need information passed to the flickers. 
Is everybody else here at this point, too? I you imagine all... that, like, as she's talking, I kind of get the visual of you guys sort of, like, surrounding her in, in maybe not, like, a invasive way, but mm -hmm. like, backing each other up way, maybe. Mm -hmm. So if everybody wants to be there, they can. I don't know. What do you guys think? Are we are, are we even open to this kind of thing? You know, like you know, just kind of out of character at the moment. But at, you know, as our as this group, are we open to someone coming in and just offering us a job right now? Uh, I mean, I think we're we're pretty low level, so you know, at this point, I have to imagine. I have to imagine we're like any chance for some cred to kind of get us jump started here is not a bad thing. Haboob would totally think this is them trying to fuck us over in some way, though. <laughs> like, because we, we fucked them over, and now they want to, like, fuck us over. Seems dodgy to me. Well, she <laughs> she is holding one of the, uh, like, calling cards of this group. Um, but Yeah, Saf Saffron goes everywhere, though. She could just <laughs> match it up anywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, the interesting thing about this, too, is that they are uh, just tier one as well, but they're sort of trying to throw their weight around, right? Like sending another tier one person to you to get them to do something. Like it's it's very much like a weird power play. And, and I think maybe a little bit of the insinuation is like, we know that you're the ones with the tornadoes and we can easily point the tracers to you if we need. That's sort of the thing. I think for folk, they float down the river of time like an errant, like an errant lily pad. So they are definitely fine to go along with the flow of this instance. Yeah. And technically for uh, the rules, for rivals, it's uh, a neutral faction throws their weight around. They threaten you, a friend or a contact or one of your vice purveyors forfeit one rep or one cred uh, per tier of the rival or stand up to them and lose one status with them. It's the mechanical thing that's happening here. But uh, I think uh, pay them one rep would be translated in that like we would off screen say that you like do this thing or if one of your members does it or, or whatever. And the rep, I think, is basically your sort of like, I think the rep moves from one faction to the other because you're accepting something a little bit beneath you, right? Like an Aaron boy, basically. <laughs> or an Aaron person. Her boobs, I'm leaning against the wall. I'm shaking her head about doing it. <laughs> She's like, think... nah. I think without without committing one way or the other, I think I just ask, what's the job pay? Um, they'll they'll give you a cred for being their messengers, their mouth. I think I look towards everybody else to, I mean, at this point, just just to get like either a nod, shake of the head, anything like that from from the rest of the group. A cred pretty much like fuck all amongst like four um <laughs> people it's like heap shit <laughs> i thought yeah. i thought an individual cred was actually still pretty pretty worthwhile isn't it isn't it a decent amount or is it not it but is. not after that last job <laughs> we don't, we don't have the actual relative. cred though like do i guess that's the question i have do we have the actual cred from that or do we we just have the raw material so we're, we don't actually have the cred to be able to use right yeah, yeah we're not exactly. really like liquid yet. yeah yeah, yeah. You have yes. you have the ability to get easy cred, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But but right now in your like actual coffers, right? You have whatever it was that you began with. Yeah, I think just one cred. I think we have only one. Uh, so, so that's doubling our um, <laughs> current savings. <laughs> <laughs> I think just so you know where Silver's coming from on this, I'm really annoyed and and actually pissed off that this is like the way that they're handling, you know, giving us this job. It's kind of an insult. I think my like Silver's way of of dealing with this, I think, is primarily to like uh, Silver would agree to it and absolutely do the job, get the cred, uh, but then file this away as an f you to them. Like, no, we're coming after you at some point. You know, this is so I'm willing to play the long like Silver's willing to play the long game. I don't know if you guys are. Yeah, can we, um, oh, I, yeah, I think, um, 
I can imagine that Silver would be able to impart that to um, Haboob even just by like as she's shaking her head, she's like, I think they know each other well enough. I think Haboob would follow um, Silver's lead I, and probably feels a similar, in a, a similar way. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm narrowing my eyes when I'm looking over to you, like narrowing my eyes, like, yeah, I know this sucks, but you know, let's let's deal with the fallout later and like, you know, get our get ours later, but let's 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 do the thing. And remember so, mechanically though, you'll lose one rep, but you'll gain one crit, right? Mm-hmm. Let's haggle this shit. Yeah. How like what? Like half a crit or something? <laughs> <laughs> like um is there a task that we need uh them to perform? Like some small favorite, maybe maybe uh, maybe there are mule this time around. Like you go, uh, we we've cooked this amount of the batch. Go go sell this. You could take a percent, uh, but but we don't want to. We're, we're trying to get out of the sales biz. Okay, so do you you want to like buy them off basically? Uh, I just want a little bit more out of the deal. But I don't okay. know if that I don't know if that fits into the system or if that's uh, me just being a dick. <laughs> We're doing a lot of negotiating with homeowners insurance and uh, plumbers at the moment, so uh, nice. Okay. We work rental spaces at the moment. Well, if you if you press her a little bit, she'll say like, uh, "I was like in a similar situation, right? Like I didn't want to be here either, and I'm just being a mouthpiece because I owe them, right? So there's like I don't I think you're you'd be overestimating me," she says grudgingly. <laughs> Uh, if you think that I have like negotiating power with them, right? Like their mouth tr is like, they use other people to voice what they need. And this is like what they're all about, right? Like just using other people to be intermediaries and stuff. What does she have on her? Cause I like Lauren's idea. Let's, let's take her bike. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. She's just she's just uh, passing a message, right? <laughs> so she wouldn't be like, like she doesn't really care what your answer is. She'll tell them either way, but she's not going to be like, like her 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 fulfillment is saying this and taking your answer. So she wouldn't be like going to give you anything more to, to to do something for them or anything. Yeah, I was thinking of it more as like a threat. Like you, you, oh, walked, into, okay. you walked into our turf and. Now we own you. Oh, <laughs> but I'll, okay. But I'll, <laughs> but <I'll laughs> that. No, that's fine. I mean, hey, this is this is heck the planet, man. This is like if you you're you're clandestine individuals that are uh, badass. If that's the way you want to play it, then we can we can hit it up if that's what you want to do. I'll just are throw you... that out there and let uh, let the others uh, make the call. Yeah, I think that would be a role to like intimidate or right, like command or something like that. I mean, she did come here all by herself when we're obviously like not on good terms. That was like pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If someone wants to roll to like do that kind of a threat or or some kind of manipulation, I can aid by like stepping back in front of the uh, the bead curtain, like I'm blocking the exit. At this point, they're kind of trapped in there. That kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's intimidate her. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Okay, well, who's doing it? And is this like a group thing or what? Or is somebody helping somebody else do it? It feels pretty groupy. <laughs> but what do you think? Yeah, I like the I like the idea. Let's let's uh let's surround her <laughs> and uh and this, this is a shakedown, right? <laughs> I think her booth just standing in front of the door now, like as as my party in it, so she can't get out. Right. Okay. So so you're not gonna give her an answer and you are gonna intimidate her into her giving you something. <laughs> I, here's what I imagine. I imagine us doing the intimidation thing here first and then right as she's walking out and like I just, you know, like I'm standing right next to the thing saying, you know, tell them we'll take the job. Just kind of as like an afterthought to the, you know, it's not the important part, you know, it's just kind of us asserting our power here a little bit wow, foolhardy, okay. in, in a foolhardy way, probably. Right. Okay. Well, who is leading the action then? Or is somebody else setting somebody up for a better effect? 
that kind of thing. Look on your uh, handouts to page one and see what you want to do with top right corner uh, teamwork. Leading a group action would be like whoever's really good at this would do it and everybody else would help and we take the highest die. Uh, assist would just somebody's doing the action, somebody gets a plus one D, but you incur stress for doing that. And a setup action is something that you do beforehand. If you achieve it, any team member who follow up get plus one effect or improved position. All right. Qu question how how violent is our group at this point yeah, that's a good question i think we're we're <laughs> filling out some line. things <laughs> about this group <laughs> so what i'm thinking of now maybe not shaking her down for like her scraps or or her bike but maybe uh, so my move is saboteur uh i'm assuming this person came with some type of uh with some type of mode of sure. transportation yeah, I'm sure she rode up on her cycle, right? Think think like futuristic Basso Zuko style, like customized bikes, right? Can Except I that they're cycles? Can I sabotage this bike so that when it gets in proximity of other bikes, the other bikes in the in their gang that it just explodes? Okay. So like you're gonna Not like murder, just just like destroying their property. Like more more to the vandalism than towards the uh the uh the genocide, I guess. Okay. So so you slip out of the room and then like um, Yeah, let them do the daring like let the let the group sort of like do this shakedown and while they're doing that, maybe Maybe I haven't come out, right? Maybe I'm still in the shop and I just oh, sort of okay. like walk around, like I get the signal and I walk around and I just like sabotage this bike. Wow, okay. So it's it's getting very sense of anarchy in here. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Okay, so you're going to be doing your own uh, action on the bike then, right? If, that's, if, that, if the group wants to go down this route. Yeah. I'm also perfectly willing to be a little bit cooler here. Well, it seems like I like the idea, maybe even that we don't necessarily know that you're going out to sabotage the bike. We're just intimidating her in the room and you've walked out to do something like that. That sounds fun to me. <laughs> All right, let's do it. OK, so roll. What do you think it is that you're doing action wise? So for me, so I'm not quite sure how this works. So saboteur is a wreck. When you wreck, the work is much quieter than it should be, and the damage is hidden from casual inspection. Nice, yeah. I think that it is also a wreck, but in the system, I try not to assume what you're doing and ask you, and then we'll fit that uh, to what is happening fictioning, fictionally. But what you're describing does sound like you're wrecking the cycle. <laughs> so yeah, it's either a... Good. It's either a wreck or a tinker, right? Like if, because uh, um, I'm not trying to destroy the thing. It's like I'm, I'm in. It's like it's like creating a proximity, uh, like a proximity bomb of some sort. Yeah, well, it's up to you, but I think that um, modifying it, it's, it's not tinker. Tinker's in the sheet, but okay. with us, it's modified. But modifying it, I think, would be, um, like. I think you could do it both ways. Wrecking it sounds like you're you're doing it in an exact, uh, precise amount of, of wrecking it, right? <laughs> so I think you could justify it either way. Okay. It, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Although I guess I have two dots in Tinker and one in Wreck. So I don't know what okay. the cheap way is to uh, do this, but... Uh, well, the, I guess if you wanted to game it, then you'd say you're modifying it, right? Yeah, I'll follow the rules. Let's do uh, let's do wreck. I mean, that's what it. Uh... Yeah, because you're intending it for it to be quiet, right? Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, if this works, then you're going to make it so that I don't know, like maybe you rig it so that like the the GPS or whatever on it is like going to trigger the 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 backlash on the muffler or something, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, is this risky, controlled, or desperate? I think it would be risky for sure. Kay. And standard effect. All right. 
uh, no bonus dice? How does how do bonus dice work? Uh, so people can offer a devil's bargain, or you could push yourself for two stress for one extra die, or somebody can help you, but they're not there. Does anyone have a devil's bargain? You can come up with one yourself as well. Anyone can give you a devil's bargain. I don't remember how that works, but I will uh, I'm gonna push myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so it, the can, stress. You can do both as well. So you could take two stress, get one D, and a devil's bargain is just no matter what occurs next, um, there's implications for the fiction later on. So I could be like, um, I would say that she knows who does it, but she would already, <laughs> I think, uh, be aware of that. <laughs> oh, someone on someone on the street sees you messing with the black would be a pretty obvious. Yeah, that's, that'd be an someone. obvious one. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, I'll just fictionally make make a lot of sense. Yeah. So what would happen is if you like to lose devil's bargain, then you say sure. You add an extra bonus die, but that happens no matter what. If you fail or you succeed, it's still a thing that happens. What do we think, guys? Depends how much you want to succeed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, all right, I'll do the devil's bargain. Wait, so the devil's bargain is that that somebody sees me, right? Yeah. Somebody who will matter, I guess. That that's all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, but I'll do that, but I won't push myself. That you won't make, push yourself. Okay. No, that doesn't make a lot of sense in the fiction. Sure. I think pushing yourself could make sense. Yeah, you're trying to get it done in like a really short amount of time <laughs> you know, before she comes out. Yeah, like pushing yourself in the fiction just looks like you're you're trying harder than you normally would to get this thing done. So it can always make sense, I think. All right, all right. It's up to you, though. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I feel, I'm feeling the pressure here now. <laughs> now I do have to push myself whether I want to or not. Okay, good. <laughs> feeling pushed to push yourself. So we take the highest die, which is a six, which means you you succeed without complications. So do you have, uh, just to, give me the, the fiction of what it looks like, basically, for for what we see on camera. It doesn't have to be like a technical thing. You're like, I take the muffler and it goes <laughs> into the thing, whatever. Just whatever we see on screen. Uh, I think, um, what's my guy's name? Um, Bergen. I think Bergen is sitting in the back and he hears uh, um, he hears the commotion up front, sort of um, uh, peers, peers out, sees that it's a member of the, what's this group again? The Constructed Chaos. Constructed Chaos. Sees a member of the Constructed Chaos, knows this, this is the biker gang. Uh, and so I, you know, I've like, I quickly move to the, to the bench. I pull out some like, some little contraption uh, that I've concocted, go out the back door, sort of like nonchalantly walk up, um, and just sort of like you know stick a like stick a band aid or something underneath the uh, underneath the um, you know underneath the muffler of this thing, uh, and just keep walking. And I go get a cup of coffee, not tea, not tea, yes. no tea today, no tea today. Cool. And so. Just so everyone's aware of uh, the fiction, then as soon as she uh, comes a approximation with the bikes, it'll like explode or something, right? Yeah, like, maybe just maybe not explode. Uh, maybe just like it short circuits all these bikes, and it's going to be really expensive to like get them back. Up. Cool. Okay. Like they could really use a workshop or something like that to be able to fix them up, but they don't have one. Ooh. Hell yeah. Maybe, maybe since these are like eco bikes normally, right? Like the, all the bikes have uh, like components within it to use a biodiesel engine that is like illegal. But uh, when you examine it as like as a cursory layman and stuff, it just looks like an eco bike. So I like the idea of maybe you sab sabotaging that like the circuitry or whatever for the charging station, where all these bikes have to dock onto feeds back, right? And then it like short circuits them all. Yeah. So that it's like, like maybe these things happen, but probably not because you just went to go hang out with these people and then your bike got fucked up. But um, yeah. It seems a little <laughs> bit like she's doing this like potentially outside the auspices of her like own group a little bit too. Like maybe she's got a personal 
like thing that she's got so it kind of could be cool if she's you know she can't necessarily tell them where she was and all the shit so it might not come back super exactly. hard on us with a whole lot of them right so what is does uh i wonder so what is it when you go out and we get this scene tell me one thing that you see out on the street so we know that it's like a retro futuristic like you know, thing going on, like Blade Runner number one instead of 2049 in the future. I'm going to need a second. Give me a second on that. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, we'll cut back into the inside. Uh, so are you guys still planning on being really mean to her? Too? <laughs> Do we yeah, want to? Boob. Yeah, her boob has a gun out now. Oh, shit. in the doorway she just like gets it out but she's not like she's just you know like holding it there what does <laughs> what does her boob look like as well did we i don't remember if her boob's pretty it. much constantly um like robed so she's got a um there's she's kind of got desert robes but her um her main veil is like kind mm. of has a visage on it like this, I'm kind of picturing it a little bit like totemic kind of like, you know, like, you know, like that snarl kind of totemic snarl on it. So you can see through, you can see her face just underneath, but she's got this kind of like scary, like mask on the front of her um, thing. And what, yeah. what kind of gun do you have out and what does it look like? Um, maybe it's just one of the... Um, She's printed probably ones? just got a printed one out, yeah. Oh, okay. So are you leading this intimidation? Or I think I was trying to support it from the doorway. Oh, okay. Like I'm letting the intim intimidation happen rather than her just walking out. Okay. Yeah, then I think I probably walk up really close to this person and kind of get like, you know, right up in their face a little bit and and just it's just kind of in this cool like you know calm voice i'm like it's you know it's a you have a lot of gall walking into this place with the uh the conflict we've had in the past just want you to know if you ever walk in this place again you won't be walking out if you're lucky today and i <laughs> okay. say get the hell, i just tell her to get the hell out of here and as she's like walking away if she does that's when sure. i'll be like oh tell them we'll take the job and I think I've probably got the flower in my hand. I grabbed it like when I was like kind of up in their, in their face, intimidating them without them kind of realizing that they had, you know, been that that had been grabbed. So I'm kind of just holding it. So yeah, tell them, tell them we'll take the job. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So um, I'm not super interested in. Well, maybe maybe it might be interesting to see it in fiction. I don't know. Mm. We'll see. Okay, so, but yeah, so you're not going to intimidate her. You just bought enough time for that to happen, right? Like, it, well, you in, you are intimidating her, but not mechanically, or are you? Right. I don't think there's a point in mechanically doing it right now. I mean, especially with this being just kind of an entanglement thing. I don't think we, I, I wasn't personally thinking we needed to push it any farther mechanically. It's just, just kind of a cool fiction thing while we're dealing with this and showing how cool. bad the relationship is and, and how bad our relationship is with the uh, what, what is the name of the organization again that she's part of it's the constructed it, chaos yeah constructed yeah. chaos yeah okay cool <laughs> so yeah i think she like i think you see her looking around like she's ready for like uh, a fight but then when she like looks around she for the first time notices that she's like outnumbered and she sort of like scoffs and uh walks out and then when you say that thing she i think she sort of like tenses up as if she's like like i will kill a bitch right now basically right like when you say the oh it will take the job thing and then she just like unclenches right and it goes through the the door and you hear the like ding dong thing in your in your, all your heads right and so is um is bergen still out there or is he gone now Bergen's at the coffee shop getting everybody a cup of coffee. Uh, yeah, like across the way, watching her drive yeah. off and you being like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> nice. And on my okay. way back, I stop off at the honeycomb and I just pull some honeycomb and I break it off into the coffee. Oh, well, say it for everybody. I saw it in chat, but for people watching, they won't know it. Yeah, so uh, the thing that I see that uh, makes this a futuristic uh, space 
uh, the wall on the far side of the uh, on the far side across the street from the tea shop is a massive like honeycomb, and there are these electronic bees that are manufacturing honey. Synthetic honey. <laughs> Synthetic <laughs> bees. Cool. Nice. I love it. Yeah. And that makes sense too, right? Like they would need these manufactured bees to pollinate around and, and do all this stuff, right? So that's that's really cool. Cool. Um and she's gonna have a bad day when she goes home. So that's cool. Um let's break for five and you guys can consider your downtime actions. So normally you get two. You get an extra downtime action when you do your like quote unquote thing that you're going to be doing uh, in your turf, which you are in right now. And uh, you can spend cred to do more actions if you want to. And the things that you can do, I believe, are on page two. Yeah, uh, on the bottom right corner. So just consider that and we'll come back at uh, 05. OK. OK, see ya.
Whoa. I like how we made that entanglement get totally out of control. <laughs> it was like an hour long again. <laughs> fun and we learned a lot about you guys <laughs> thought that was interesting i'm like i wonder if they'll be like nice to these people because they like like it was kind of ambiguous as to whether or not you guys were going to be nice to them or not because you kind of like stole their space so i was like are you the aggressor are they the aggressors or bad feelings or these like are you guys kind of like like you have this aesthetic of being hippies, but you are not nice, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, I think we were definitely the aggressors just in general with them before and now, because like, I imagine that we're just like, we're a you know, crappy, small little gang at this point, but we've got big aspirations. We're, we're, we're too big for our britches so far, I think, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're not even tier one, right? So. Yeah, yeah. We suck, but we think we're awesome. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll get there. We'll get there. I, uh... I kind of see this poor French scientist like poking their head through the beads and going tea and then going, oh no, no, no. <laughs> I'll I'll come back later. <laughs> I'm like totally complicit in all of the violence that's going on, but feel somewhat absolved because they keep their nose out of it and go back to their science. Very nice. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Plus, I feel like it's my dad's way of like trying to fix every problem is by offering tea. So I might try and do the same. Like, <laughs> oh, this so, conflict. Tea? Tea would fix this. You want some tea? I can brew a cup of tea. So does she like, uh, do you do they them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, do they actually give them tea then? Or give her tea when she's leaving? Um, If feasible. Uh, well, she, perhaps. she was like waiting. <laughs> well, the pretense was she was waiting for Vidi to process it or whatever, right? Yeah, I so think. It'd be kind uh, of funny if she like when that moment when she freezes or whatever, and then she leaves. If you like ran out and be like, "Don't forget your tea." Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, like, on, like on the house or something. Like, hey, on the house. <laughs> Actually, totally. if you guys if you guys want to use the Hangouts toolbox to put up your character names and your pronouns, that would be good. It'll help me learn the names and the the pronouns faster and probably be helpful for people watching as well who can't see the roll 20 stuff. Laura, do you know how to do that? <laughs> I do it like fingers crossed my internet. Let's see. Oh yeah, maybe maybe not for you then. <laughs> oh, I think I'm okay. <laughs> nice Lewis like bloom is unacceptable <laughs> nice yeah that's I just cool. don't like that particular shade of blue mm, I prefer yeah. sky blue <laughs> I get it I feel it Sweet. Yeah, it's nice that it's working again. Hey, it didn't work for like a month. Yeah, any um, idea why? Or was it? I don't know. It always was like, it is not compatible with Chrome 63 or whatever. And I'm like, am I on that? I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting you're getting to um, those push goals and stuff, Razor, for the um, Kickstarter. That's really cool. Yeah, there's a lot of stretch goals going on. Hey, I mm -hmm. think we put down like eight of them or something and we have kate's one right now and then at 32 and make the tracer team which would be pretty cool the crew were your tracers mm -hmm. of course that's a like i think that was the most requested thing everyone's like so can i play a tracer though can i can i oppress people <laughs> <That'd be cool. laughs> 
I like to impress people if that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I can't blame them. I'd like to be a blade runner as well. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but I think that it'll be interesting dynamics going on. It's like Sean Netner's Blue Coats uh, thing for Blades, right? Yeah, and I think it's kind of fun for extended play to like play as, you know, like crooks for a while and then like keep even keep that gang like in your continued narrative and then, you know, like pursue them in some way as another group of characters. That's like pretty attractive to me. Yeah. Well, I was thinking since in next month I'll probably be um, GMing it like multiple times for the gauntlet, like two or three times a week. And so I could have like all these interesting narratives, narratives going on, but like can combine them all into like what's going on in the city and stuff. I think that would be cool. Like if there was a team of tracers, I could tie it into like sprinkle in little events that happened in, in game two and like all that kind of stuff. I think it would be neat. Just like peripheral things. I don't think I would make like them interact directly with the the other PCs and stuff because that would I don't want other PCs being able to affect other PCs in this like weird yeah and create kind of a weird mess of timelines and that sort of thing <laughs> yeah but I think just like sprinkling peripheral things would be neat mm. Ooh. no worries Aaron can you uh, can you do the hangouts thing as well and write your character's name and all that cool um who wants to start with downtime actions let's get activities up in here uh i'll go if no one else is jumping at it um and we get two right or is yeah. it yeah two okay yeah perfect okay um i think in my off time i think i'm gonna i'm gonna go straight for a long-term project uh kind of more of a personal one in addition to what's going on um I'm imagining, I think I talked about, I worked for a, you know, that, that particular company that, that was part of the, one of the big corporations that was part of the downfall that then transitioned after the fall of everything into kind of being the more information based, based current one. What, what was that one called? Is it, do you the, remember? I, I, yeah. Which one? Sorry? Uh, you said it was like more, in, it was information, like they were, they were the information one, the corporation currently. I think that was yeah. the big thing you told me about them. It's called information. It's called information. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I imagine, so it's the CEO that I have, like, you know, that I have a real beef with. I imagine myself just kind of like going off on my own and kind of tracking the person, following them around, just, just getting a sense of their like day-to-day -day routines. And like, I imagine this being kind of a long-term project to just figure out weaknesses in their routine when they're vulnerable. Cool. Okay. And do you want to cool. name this person then, since you hate them yeah, with a burning passion? <laughs> totally, yeah. I think this is the person actually on my character sheet that I, I kind of just decided oh. to roll this all into a thing. So I've got my uh, person that I hate and that doesn't like me probably. I guess we have a beef that uh, Fatma, who is a an Ooh. exec. Does that work if that they're the same person or is that a different yeah, thing? Totally. Okay. It makes sense that you hate the person you dislike, yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I imagine I imagine doing that just kind of as a personal aside when I'm doing things. Yeah, we're going to the danger zone with this rivalry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she, you know, we're, um, that's basically her entire reason for being in this job anyway, is, is money and resources to be able to accomplish what she wants to, to kind of clear her conscience um, for her participation in the kind of collapse of the weather <laughs> and the world. Totally. Let's see, how big of a clock should that be, do you think? Um, just to get a weakness. Yeah, yeah. Just to just to get a real good read on their mm -hmm. schedule, places where they're easy to isolate and and uh, yeah. With the idea to get like a better effect if you go after them, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's make it six. I think. I don't okay. think. I think it's pretty, pretty ballsy and but like unexpected as well. You know. Yeah, I'm hanging in the background. I'm not making any actions against them. They're obviously like way higher tier at this point. So I'm just I'm just laying the groundwork for future stuff. Right. Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. And then I need to roll. Fortunate. To... Yeah. Let's see. How does this work? So I, it's a long-term project. 
roll a trait and mark the segment. Okay, so I think it makes sense that I've kind of positioned this as kind of like hunt. You know, I'm 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 tracking them. I'm following them over time. Does that make sense? Totally. Cool. All right. So rolling hunt and the position and and stuff doesn't matter, does doesn't it? Matter. Yeah. Okay. There's no danger. There and no bonus dice. Submit. Boom. I get a six. Okay, so that's so four, right? Or three. It's three. So what is it? Uh, uh, six. Yeah, three. Three. Three ticks of that six clock for. Okay. Sweet. All right. All right yeah. I've got that. And then for my second, I imagine this kind of being rolled into into Ooh. that. Just, just at least, what was that? Do you want to ask a question too? I think it would make sense oh, sure. to do a gathering info thing about it, and then we can yeah have the, like fiction about it. Yeah, totally. I think um, let's see. I think with all this gathering information, find out what they do day to day. I think I'm um, you know kind of uh, mm, does it make sense to ask about any like skeletons in their closet, things that they're, you know, hiding in their day to day life that they, you know, wouldn't want publicized, they wouldn't want, you know, that, that would hurt their company and them. Does that make sure. sense? Sure. Why don't we go with what is your vice? Uh drugs, but not uh yeah, stupor, stupor. <laughs> you know, to get away. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't I don't sample our own. I go outside and I actually kind of have fun ideas for when I when I actually have to indulge it. I think I have a fun idea for like a super weird drug to, yeah, to I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um I think they go to a club in Bastion, which is sort of like uh you guys are like the bottom, uh like the roots is like well, obviously the bottom of the like foundation tree, whatever, right? A uh, Bastion is like just one above you, right? It'd be like almost It'd be like working class, but not white collar. It'd be like blue collar folks, I think. And the place is called... Uh, the person who runs it is is Ray, W-R-A-Y. And... Hmm, I'll let you name it, maybe, if you have an interesting name for it. But it basically... Oh the the th the in is that it's like a vice purveyor right like so you're like oh sweet if like i had the cred or if i can work my way into this place then i can totally that's my in with them right like they're they have to indulge their their vice as well just like everybody else and i know where it is okay cool if i think on the name and just kind of write it down and let you know next time it comes up as a thing totally, is that okay yeah. okay yeah i think it uh to help you out with it it's a luxury uh pleasure one Okay. Which is interesting because they're like an executive. So like what what is more luxurious than being an executive? Or just I guess they can afford to have a vice that is luxurious, I suppose, as well. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um and what was the second thing? Yeah, I kinda wanna just roll this at like at least fictionally roll it into it, but I'm gonna do some uh resolve training because that's our one of our uh bonuses that we have. And I'm imagining that it just being like you know, scenes in addition to like when I'm following them around, occasionally going and like chatting up the uh the particular person that, you know, maybe they interacted with, you know, kind of keeping it on the down low. I'm not like asking pointed questions about uh about Fatma, but uh it's I'm I'm definitely just going in, talking to people kind of schmoozing and trying to get bits of information about uh, about what he's been doing, what he does in that particular place. So, yeah, cool. so I imagine it being resolved training, we're eventually kind of trying to get some more consort going. Cool. So I'll take, so that's two experience, right, since we have the training? Yep. Yeah, sweet. So let's see, when you prepare to execute an operation of your preferred type under hunting grounds, you get plus one DE to any gather information rules and a free additional downtime activity to contribute to the operation. So just remember that. I, I can't remember what you guys chose though. Was it supply? Cause I remember uh, we were like debating, wasn't it? Right. I think it's, Oh shoot. Is it on the, I'm looking to find it on the sheet. We were talking about maybe changing it from, um, we initially decided supply, I think, but then maybe we were talking about seeing as we already have supply of making it, um, like what is it like a place to deal from like we deal in this area yeah that's true whatever yeah, you guys think would worse. be more advantageous i think like you are kind of like dealers though right like out of the mm. out of the blue long so it mm. might be beneficial to do that one but whatever 
whatever you guys think. But yeah, yeah, I think it, the dealing one or whatever, what is it called? Like we've got turf or something to deal from. Um, let's see. You've got wired. There's sales supply, show of force, and socialize. And so you have that sales ter territory. And so when you do one of those things and you gather information or you do, you can do an extra downtime activity, right? Which is probably like, you can sell your shit, right? <laughs> so you don't have to use one of your own downtime actions to be peddling your, your stuff if it's already changed into whatever. I'm having trouble finding this on the um, Roll20 sheet. Oh wait, I found it. What? It's right in the it's right in the middle there. I see it. Sales sales territory and supply is what we have there currently. Okay. Oh, you so have supply. That's what's on there currently, unless we want it to be sales or whatever the other one was. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you want it to supply? Be kind of makes sense too. If it's if we've got um, VT like in there, like that could be the action working with her to like you know cut the supply. And then we have to use extra action for sale or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm yeah I'm imagining that like because because this is what we do on our home turf right. This yeah. is the, the, the what we get benefit. I'm yeah I'm imagining we use our home turf as like great place to to you know like take advantage of the you know to extract stuff from you know the storms or whatever that come through the acts of God. But then we probably we probably don't sell right like out of our front. I have to imagine. I think it is is are we are we oh, actually okay. selling from the tea shop or are we like distributing it elsewhere like out of our general area? That's maybe that's, it's only on a very small scale in the shop to like select customers that know to ask for it, but otherwise we're dealing like outside. That, I think I think that know, makes like sense. It's not our main business in the shop. Yeah. I know that at least in, in the fiction, Silver would definitely be pushing for us not to be dealing out of where we sleep. You know, like, mm -hmm. I think that's a bad idea generally. Yeah. What's it called? Um, don't shit in your own bed or something. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the expression? Only, only in know. other people's beds. Only in other people's beds. <laughs> that's where you shit. Okay, cool. Okay, so, yeah, I just wanted to remind you of that for the other thing. So you're doing your second downtime action to complete the clock, hopefully? Like smoothing with the with the customers of the vice and stuff. Is that what you were saying? Um, more actually, that was just me rolling it into the fiction. Actually, actually, that's oh. me training resolve so that I can eventually get some more consort. I figured I was kind of like consorting with all these people, practicing, uh, you know, basically being out there schmoozing enough that I'll get better at it as time goes on. I was just I was just uh, fictionally tie, tying it together. If that awesome. makes sense. Okay, sure. Yeah. Who else wants to to do it up? I'm um, ready to go, but I'm happy to wait if other people are ready to go as well. Okay, I'm going to go. Um, <laughs> okay, I've got um, two ideas. I was thinking, um, like, how much heat do we have from that last thing? You got two. I was thinking maybe something around um, getting the traces like off of our tail a little bit and I had an idea maybe of um, like going around and um, messing up a few other um, mains <laughs> as well. <laughs> so that it maybe it looks like there's actually a problem in the system at the moment and that, and that combined with the act of God was what made the mains like burst just to kind of mess up the signal. Oh, there's some group out there like messing shit up that doesn't have anything to do with us and okay. um, potentially um, getting um, like at least fictionally some assistance from like J5 in terms of the tech part of it, but maybe I can go out and do that. Yeah. So it's an action, I guess, to reduce heat. That's a thing, right? Yep. Yeah, cool. What does that look like mechanically? Uh, mechanically, you're going to roll. Let's see. Let me pull it up so I'm correct and I'm not quoting inaccurate things here. So, blah, blah, blah. 
That's the top one. See how you reduce heat on the crew and roll your action, reduce heat according to the result level. Cool. So you're um, an action to reduce I'm, it. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking of it as like a sneaking kind of thing, like I'm moving around town, like I know what I've got to do. And I'm okay. moving around town surreptitiously, like busting some shit. So it's not uh, it's not what you're doing. It's not being caught doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because I'm I don't want to be seen doing it. I'm trying to reduce heat, not like get more heat. <laughs> yeah, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can buy that. Sure. I'm just kind of trying to factor in getting technical like knowledge, so it's not a like a rec or modify role myself, like. It's kind of like I know what I do. I need to. Can you get assistance on a reduce heat role, or um, is that just a fictional component that I'm adding into it? It's kind of my justification for using sneak anyway, because I don't think my character would know how to necessarily like bust the water mains. Don't you, you can <laughs> don't get, you get like help. an extra? Yeah, sorry. You can get help if you want it. Yeah. If someone will do it, doesn't it also work if like one of your contacts, you know, could possibly help? Don't you? Can't you get an extra die from that, or is that uh, yeah. for something else? Uh, that's for the engagement role, I think you're thinking. Okay, yeah. sorry. I'll, well, I'll are you check, but... are you happy to help me, um, Aaron? Are you happy for J five to help me? So I'm figuring this is me saying, "Hey, we've messed this thing oh, up." Like. You're right. It's a you if it if a contact could help you, then you'd also get plus one D. You're totally right. Yeah, cool. Um Do you have a friend contact that can help you with this stuff? Not really. I've just got a doctor. Unless there's a crew one. You have like one or two people. We already established VD, I guess, as a contact, but you we haven't really fleshed out the one or two other people at your tier zero thing. I'm happy just to um get the one extra dice, I guess, from J5 helping me. Yeah, because your contact is technically VD or whoever's under your sheet, and we already established what VD can do, and it doesn't sound like this. <laughs> cool. So I'm, I'll roll my um, my sneak sure. and then plus, plus one. Uh, yeah, if someone's helping you, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, what's the position? Uh, it doesn't... It doesn't matter. You're just looking for the result. And the result is like one to three, you clear one heat, four to five, two, six, three. Okay, cool. So you're hoping for a four or five at least. Okay. I got a six. Boom. You're unheated. Haha, -ha, suckers. You're yeah, so I think it, on screen it just looks like I kind of like heads together. Um, conversation between Haboob and J5 at, you know, in the workshop or something. And maybe um like Haboob, like I'm given some sort of little device or something. And then there's just a couple of flashes of her moving around town and a few other it's just like a I think a couple of other neighborhoods around in a circle of the mains like popping. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I guess it works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or at least throws off the, like, those guys for a while. Um, and my other um, thing is I'm going to indulge my vice, even though I'll probably overindulge, <laughs> just because yeah. that sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, Haboob's um, vice is um, obligation. Um, which I'm picturing she has an obligation to um to I think actually maybe I think it's a secret but she's got like family maybe even a couple of children of her own like back in the desert somewhere and that she's here essentially to make I, I think she's fucked up and is maybe not welcome home but she feels an obligation to support her family in some way um okay. so i'm just trying to work out i think maybe she doesn't really have money to send home yet 
but I think maybe it's some sort of um, the obligation thing is some sort of um, it's an expensive form of communication, I guess, you know, like whatever a um, expensive telegram is in um, cyberpunk, maybe it's some sort of like VR, like thing that she has to go to. Yeah, whatever the, the VR version of Klax is, <laughs> the Klax <laughs> sure. um, semaphore towers. Yeah, I think maybe it's that um, she contacts them ahead and they have to go somewhere and it's this immersive she's able to connect with a relative and in a kind of full, you know, like they're both standing there and they're able to talk for a limited amount of time and she's like, oh, they'll be um, like, I'll send money home soon. And I think it's probably a, um, she receives a very cold reception from them, but she's, I guess, um, yeah, like she's, this is her vice and what she feels she needs to um, do. Mm -hmm. um, is there a so you, um, you roll your yeah. weakest stat, lowest attribute, uh, clear stress equal to the highest die result. Cool. So is that like insight, like prowess uh, or resolve that I, are those the attributes or are the? Yeah, yeah, the, the top tier ones, yeah. Yeah, um, cool. Okay. So that's insight or resolve, yeah. yeah. Insight or resolve for you, yeah. And so, no bonus dice? No. <laughs> I got a two. I see you cleared two. <laughs> yeah, it worked. <laughs> I had two. Well, <laughs> Damn nice. it. You don't get the thing. <laughs> On my third action, I uh, indulge again. <laughs> no. Nice. You, you satiate your Catholic guilt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Cool. That worked out well. Cool. Who's next? Lauren, Do you want to go J5? If you'd like to go, you can go. I can go. Go for it. Um, cool. Question for training. Is that just for um, the three stats, or can you train toward your playbook advancement as well? Uh, or both you can do. Oh, either, cool. Either or any track that you want. Awesome. You can like, also... I was going to... Uh, yeah. in, in, we don't have the sheets because we're just using the Blades ones uh, in Roll20, but there's also a tr same track for uh, getting stress as well, more stress pips. Oh, awesome. So you can put it towards any of those things. Cool. Because um, I kind of want to train with... So like, I don't know, this is going to sound dumb, but like the one thing that I think is super neat about like living in one place for your whole life and then going somewhere else is like, when I go home, you have this real innate sense for what the weather is doing. And so like when I go home, uh, we get like all these random quick southerlies that roll in. And so you feel the temperature drop and you're like, oh yeah, there's going to be like a storm in half an hour and then like on the dot like you get a storm rolling through but then when you move somewhere else like you just don't you feel quite numb and blind to like what like weather patterns are doing in that area so i kind of dig the idea of um whisper spending time with like vd or some other like part of the darknet or something to learn information about like what the sort of like narrative like grassroots signs are weather patterns in this particular area um yeah <laughs> that's, that's i want to train <laughs> cool. what what are you training exactly the uh, i guess a playbook move playbook move cool. towards playbook advancement yeah nice cool and what about second action um for my second action oh shoot what was it again oh no i had it in my brain and it's gone um I oh, fuck me. Um, think I'd like to. Um, oh shoot, it's really gone. Um, I think it was something to the effect of. I, oh yeah, so I had this thought of like. Um, doing some kind of like miracle fruity-esque like 
creating something to warp your taste buds to enhance like the enjoyment of flavor or like making food taste like other foods and stuff. So I kind of wanted to hang out with um, potentially my dear friend Ren, the cooker of illicit drugs, to just like <laughs> <laughs> spend some time making some drugs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you uh, like what uh, specific action do you see that as being? Um, I think I'd like to start a project to make like my own little strain of something that um, is like a some kind of food enhancement drug. Like not like I don't know if it's like necessarily like illegal, but it's probably yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is, it, is it to increase the like quality of cooking, or is it? What do you think? Like mechanically, yeah. would it do? Would it? Is it like? Yeah, like is it something that would get you cred or increase your quality in a in a certain thing or Yeah, I think it would definitely increase the quality. Yeah, pretty much magic MSG. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Cyber <I'm> MSG. <laughs> okay. So let's just do a, a six clock. I think same thing as gathering the the information with um the other contact. I think it'd be as hard, which is like basically you're gonna figure it like learn and then you're gonna innovate right it'll depending on how many ticks that you get <laughs> it awesome. could, be, could be more steps <laughs> excellent how do i go around doing that again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah what action do you think it is that you're oh um like oh geez maybe um, can sort i could see um, yeah, I can see that. Let's see. I I even think modify to a certain extent would work. Uh, studying, yeah, it, it all depends on how you think you're. you're yeah, I thing. think it. I think it makes sense. I don't know to do like take this. Yeah, it's like study the thing and then perhaps is it can i do that like study the thing and then as the clock progresses like change the yeah. thingy i roll with it yeah. you're not locked in or anything yeah <laughs> yeah cool. this is just for like getting your amount of ticks on it awesome and i'd love to study it cool uh, do i just do it as controlled on the thing it doesn't matter. Okay. There's no, there's no danger here. We just want to see the the result for how many uh, pips you get ticks on the thing. Got a five and a six. Six, sweet. So three, three ticks. I guess you guys should get it. Downtime projects. <laughs> You're halfway there. Awesome. So what is it that you? Is it just like? you're having a, a night in with cooking or something or yeah i i like that it like everyone's doing some real crazy things that i like the idea was for just like tinkering around in the tea shop talking to vidi about weather and then just like sitting in the back and doing some home baking oh i thought you were hanging out oh i'm going to rent yeah, yeah yeah i'll go to rent's place and do some home baking at rent's place right <laughs> sweet <laughs> sounds good okay and what about bergen two actions do you want to do all right i'm ready so first action is i need to indulge my vice because i'm at six ticks i gotta do it <laughs> yeah for sure so, so my vice and I, and I like that uh i like how this plays off of lou's uh, uh lou's character um uh, obligation is also bergen's problem obligation to um their parents and their parents are these very like very affluent uh people and so the obligation there is uh, not having enough money, but not having enough money to live at a, like a, this this massively like wealthy tier. Um, so the way I envision that happening is that um, there's like a, a like some fancy fundraiser uh, that he needs to take his family to, and it's just like dumping money, um, you know, for a good cause. But like, I don't know why I put that in scare quotes. It's for a good cause. Um, but something that's completely outside the realm of like her her means. So I think that that's the indulging of her vice. Cool. 
<laughs> I like. I also like the scarecrow stuff. Like, a, is it actually like funding war or <laughs> what well, does that? So part of it is that, uh, and and this will come out in my next thing, which is that I'm not quite sure like where. I'm not sure whose side we're on, right? Like, I know what our group is doing, but I don't have a bet. I don't have a good sense yet of like what the the larger structure is. Like, who's who's damaging the environment? Who's for the environment? Is everybody for the environment? But we're just doing it in different ways, like in our own little fiefdoms, right? Yeah. So I don't I don't know quite know that yet. So I can't really make the judgment call of whether or not it's like a good cause or not. But yeah, we can play that out later. It's interesting that this is how you blow off steam, though. <laughs> so, so I was thinking about that, and I think, um, and this will tie into my next action, which is that uh, Bergen likes it. Like Bergen likes that he, he's still like addicted to that fame. Like he still gets a gets a sense of gets a rush out of like dressing up like you know putting on the coattails and like going to this fancy party and and you know maybe not. Uh, like hoping that somebody recognizes them, I guess. Nice. You filthy socialite. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so is this just indulge vice? Do I add things? I don't know how that... Yeah, you, weakest, uh, roll your weakest attribute and uh, take the highest result. Okay. So my weakest attribute is prowess, right? Because I've only got one tick there? Yep. Okay. And no bonus dice. That's nice. a six. So is that exactly what it was? That is exactly what it was. <laughs> nice. I hate you people. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> you can what's, hate. what's the second one then? Okay, so the second one is um uh okay, so this is um technically this is a long term project. Um and I want I want to sort of marry these two things together, his sort of uh, technical side and his uh, desire for fame. And so I want him to be constructing a pirate radio network that taps into uh, that that taps into all like frequencies, right? So just like the the chime on the on the tea shop, I essentially like chime into that system. And like hijack everybody and just like create a pirate radio system. I don't know what he's going to use it for yet. Maybe it's to sell our stuff. Maybe it's for like, you know, maybe it's like for his own like fame, uh, like to get back on top. Uh, but he's trying to he's trying to create this, and so he's working with his his good buddy, the scavenger Sanvi, uh, to get the parts. And and it's I think of this as sort of like a long term project to. Um, to like build these towers or these uh, transmission stations uh, across the um, across the city. I Sweet. like how radio would actually probably be a pretty pirate technology that might be under the radar of the authorities too, because it's like old school, like nobody broadcasts radio waves anymore. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so what do you think that would be? Let's see, work on long term. I think my guess is tinker. I think this is a tinker. Uh... Yeah, modify. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I just, uh, okay, so this is a tinker roll. Um, what's the position? Uh, it, it doesn't matter. That You're doesn't just matter. we're just looking for the amount of ticks. Uh, five, I think. <coughs> five, cool. So two segments. And let's see how much. Well, this is your jam, right? You're a torque. Uh, yes. We'll just see. I think of this as like a fairly powerful thing though, like, or it could be very powerful. So I'm fine with this being like a long-term like project. Like how, how big in scale do you want it? Um, well, maybe, okay, so maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's scalar, right? Like, um, so that I'm, I'm constructing it in the neighborhood that we control. Like maybe that's the part that 
that I've got going, or that's the part that I can complete. But every step, like I can make concentric circles out from from that center point, um, so that there's another like I need to get another two or three ticks each time I want to expand the uh, the the range. Oh, okay. Like so. Well, I was thinking more like a cl- per per clock would be a range. I think. Okay. Um. Because it's also completing it, right? So you're increasing the range and you're tinkering with it and whatnot. So, because you're continually modifying something. I want to see long term project. Yeah. Let's, let's go with six segments for the initial thing, and then it might get harder as you go. Okay. And so, how many? Uh... Three, so you're halfway dead. Cool. And what does it look like on screen? Um, so I think at this point, it's uh, we're still like constructing the the software. So, uh, or I've got Sanvi on uh, on scavenge scavenge duty, and he's pulling like the stuff that I need to create the hardware, so that I can like program the software, so that I can sort of broadcast this out. Um, so I think we've got we've got the parts, uh, and I'm just sitting in the workshop, just sort of tinkering away and like munching on a biscuit. Cool. Yeah, I think I think the and this six segment one will be just like you get it, and it's within like a couple blocks or maybe a block or something, and then you can have another one later to that increases its quality or its scale or you know whatever you want. Does that sound perfect. good? That sounds perfect. Thanks. Cool. I'm totally picturing you just like working on a ham radio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a hand crank radio too. Like maybe this is like so old school. I don't know. Wind up ham. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, sweet. So what do you guys want to do next? Do you have, especially like the way that you guys were talking, it kind of sounds like you want to take more turf so that you can sell somewhere else. But I don't know. Yeah. Or another another idea I had. Uh, just just I, I hope we can all throw out some ideas here. My, what if I'm imagining we are we're a really small organization, right? We've only got like a couple of people working for us. We've got our you know cook. We've got nothing. Our, our ability to distribute this stuff is pretty limited at the moment. What if like at least now, as we're, you know, until we can build up eventually and have you know, our own like dealers that we have control over out there. What if we like set up bigger deals with individual dealers in other parts of the city? Like, you know, people that sell all sorts of stuff and we're like the wholesaler, they're taking it to retail, if that makes sense. Totally. Um, that's that, that was my thought. Maybe I wonder if then you are, um, whatchamacallit, if I look at the sheets, I wonder if you're, exercising that extra action, the downtime activity with the, the thing that you're doing in your sales territory for that. That could be. Yeah. Depending on what people, what people think. We could go to war with the constructed chaos. <laughs> 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 they don't have any they don't have any bikes we could just yeah, we just fuck up their bikes i'm just yeah. i'm not really heaps interested in that but i just thought i'd put it oh. out there a boob's interested in it but i'm not particularly personally interested in it <laughs> well remember I mean, that you also when you go to war there's some intense things that happen <laughs> so i don't know if you want to do that right away yeah Yes. And we got this massive amount of product to burn in a hole in our pockets without actually being money yet. Okay, so can we do this? So, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so we, I don't know if this is a go to war move or if there's something else that, that covers this, but their bikes are done. They need somebody to fix these bikes. That's a, that's a grift that we can run on them, right? So they're not going to accept my, uh, like my services, but can we, like, Supply somebody with drugs. Supply, find a find a mechanic that can fix their bikes. Give him the drugs and and take the cash from them. Like so, so that we're pulling cash directly out of the pockets of uh, constructed chaos. 
devious. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. So I totally imagine these conversations like kind of like in character around the like table in the back room of the like I know we're not sp directly speaking in character, but I'm translating it like in my head into it, like into it being some sort of like diplomatic round table like thing. Sure. Well, like, just remember that if you are planning on executing something around here, which is where constructed chaos is, right? And you plan on doing your preferred sales thing, whatever it is that you chose, then you get that gather information and you get a free downtime activity, which means you could potentially use it to gather information first and then go in, right? So just depends. You could also spend more cred to do downtime actions similarly as well, but you don't have too much of it yet. So what would it look like if this was a heist that we were, or whatever admission that we were going to do like on the constructed chaos, but we're setting ourselves up with this other mechanic first as our way like in, like, it is, is that like, what we're looking at? It sounds like a deception plan is what Aaron is totally planning. <laughs> but and then if you were doing that on your territory and you think it fits within your selected sales um, territory thing, then you'd get the, the free stuff, right? I mean, I think it's definitely like a sales operation. Like, we just we just happen to know that there's an opportunity, right? Like we're not trying to deceive constructed chaos. We just know, we, we've got this, we, we just know that we can hook up this mechanic with people who need his money. So, <laughs> and, and we're just paying him directly, right? Like it, it's all on the up and up. It's not like he's on our payroll or anything. We're just, you know, leveraging our knowledge <laughs> that, that these bikes are now destroyed. Right. Or that, that not the bikes are destroyed, but that their charging uh, station is, is no longer operational. Yeah, like it would, they wouldn't be going too fast, right? Because potentially you would, they would be like, woo, sweet, let's go after these people or whatever. And then they are like, charge up their bikes and they're like, right. <laughs> so that yeah. sounds fun to me. How about you guys? I'm, I'm trying to get, so what? what's the purpose of this we're we're doing what why are we going after this guy to to do this is this like i mean is this just are we just trying to screw over and caring about you know screwing over the uh, constructed you know folks or is that our our big end goal with this so i i was uh i imagined it as being tied to that to the go to war idea but i think that that might be raising it to a different stake i think um now now i'm thinking of it in terms of uh, gaining cred uh, and I don't know how we like gain turf, but I'm trying to like trying to uh, create a disparity in power, right? I feel like if we do this, if we get the money out of constructed chaos's hands and into our hands, uh, it allows us to like distribute our our product more broadly and sort of expand our turf. So I guess it could be a potential aim to have them like so down on money that they distribute our shit for us as well. That could like that they're open to whatever deal we offer them <laughs> just like rolling these people hard um okay well i could see it as a few different things i could see it as you doing this thing and you'll move their uh, hold to a week and if you did something else again to them then they would just be like tier zero again right uh i could also see it as you specifically telling me that you want to take turf and what you're doing on the turf is moving your your sales stuff. And this is just the fiction around you seeing if you can take this turf. Um, and then I think there was a third thing, but I think it's one of those two things. <laughs> those seem those both seem reasonable to me. I don't know, what do you guys uh, feel like doing? Do we feel like taking down this rival faction or do we feel like gaining turf? Or neither of these. Silver, I mean, in, in character at least, Silver would be pushing for turf. I think we can worry about squashing them later. I think we need to build ourselves up right now. I'm fine with that. Right. And the I think what happens is you weaken them. You take the, like, you take this turf and they don't have the resources to come after you, but their position doesn't go up or down. 
You, it's you just subtly moving in because they're all like preoccupied with this mechanical stuff going on, right? Does that make sense for everybody? So you're going for the turf option on the crew sheet, right? But vis a vis fucking these people over <laughs> who are in the same district as you, which is quite wide. So makes sense. Lauren, are you good with that? Yeah, I mean, if we've got turf, then there's more opportunity for science, which is what I care about. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Okay, so in a deception plan, you're going to name the method of which you're doing it, which uh, it sounds like you're undermining them with um, using this mechanic, right? So I wonder... Hmm. It's interesting because I wonder if it's like if it's like you doing your extra downtime activity using your sales or whatever to uh, acquire an asset and they're the one doing this thing or if we need to play out at an actual score of you doing this thing. I, think I guess another um, element could be that the mechanic, we pay the mechanic to fix their stuff in a shit way that so that they paid a lot of money and their bikes still aren't fixed. That could, like, <laughs> yeah. <It's rough. laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you then, Fraser. No, that's okay. I just want to, I think, yeah, like, I think uh, if you're taking turf, it needs to be some sort of score. And then this will be the first leg of it. So you're kind of, like, crippling them. But... So then what is the second stage of it then? So this is, you're deceiving them, right? And the method of which is disabling their cycles, right? Is that right? But then what's the actual taking the turf part of it then? I think that's what we need to get at. Are you just Maybe muscling out a, their quarters is or it a social? Is it a social thing that then we turn up and like, go like, yeah, we did all that and now like do this shit or we fuck you up. <laughs> or maybe they just have like limited mobility so that they can't they can't patrol their streets. They can't they can't control their whatever turf that they have at the moment because they they're they're no longer intimidating, right? So we just make a whole bunch of sales in that area. Um, and so people now know to come to the blue oolong. Okay. In terms of like an operation, though, the so you're just being deceitful and hoping that they don't catch on, right? Could it be extra deceit as the second one, where we go in and pretend to be their friends and say, "Hey, we see you're on um, you've fallen on hard times. So like we'll help you out by letting you distribute our drugs for us." <laughs> okay, so you you appropriate their turf by getting them vulnerable and then using them. This game's really mean. <laughs> I don't know if the game is mean or if I'm just very twisted these days. House hunting has has warped me. Well, I think let's do the deception plan and then that will uh, see if it turns into something else. Does that make sense to people then? The method of which is to use this mechanic, right? Is that right to everybody? I think yep. just the first obstacle, right? And then if need be, we'll do the next thing, right? So interesting. Okay. So do you do you guys want to do a gather information then? And it's uh, do you think that it is within your wheelhouse for what you chose for sales territory? Because you haven't really chosen one. So I would think that this is in our wheelhouse, no? Because you're just it's... supply and you're trying to get suppliers? Or is it sale? Yeah, it's more of a sales thing, I think. I don't reckon it's necessarily... Maybe do we have to spend some coin or something to um, get the extra action to get the mechanic on side before we do the deal? Is that what it's going to look like? 
Yeah, basically, it's how well are you prepared to, to do this thing, right? When we go to the engagement role, if you want to... But we still have all our flashbacks and stress and shit, don't we? To totally. see how we, um, how we planned it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So we just go... That's my dog <laughs> Porridge. Porridge. <laughs> That's like the most docile name for... <laughs> Market. Cool. Okay, so yeah. so you don't have the extra downtime action is what I'm trying to establish, right? No? Okay. So let's name this mechanic Zane. How do you guys know about this mechanic though? Because that might be the, the gather information thing, right? Maybe this is a um, a connection of social connection. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, a social connection. Yeah, I think this maybe this might be uh, and Lauren can sort of maybe uh, maybe play with this a little bit. Maybe this is somebody um, somebody that you know from. Uh, so you're an academic, right? Um, or that's the that's the backing yeah right like you you work out in the field and uh, and there you've got like like you reject that sort of like ivory tower study so maybe this is like uh, somebody who's a, a student of um, of like a, um, a renewable resource technology um, and maybe there's some connection there yeah I take that very anti tipper. Um, perhaps someone I found on the dark net internet <laughs> space. <laughs> nice. Okay. Path. Well, in that case, I think that you're doing a social connection to try to like sway this person to your cause then. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once you have this person to your cause, because right now it feels like people are just like, we know this mechanic guy, but that's not really how the game works. <laughs> we, have to, <laughs> we have to see that first, unless you have them as a contact or something like that. So you are going to make this connection of the mechanic, and then you're going to sway this mechanic to like, fuck these, these people up, right? Basically. Sounds good. I, I will note that I made my character particularly awkward, so they are very bad at swaying people, so this is going to be very fun. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it doesn't mean that uh, everyone else isn't there as well. Like, it could be the same thing as when you were intimidating that the, the biker woman as well, right? Uh, awesome. But but you're the, the specific entry point. So where is it that Let's let's gather information because you guys need to learn where it is that you can get at them and all this other stuff. And I think that, yeah, let's do. If you're if you're if you're doing your extra action, then do that. Otherwise, spend a cred to gather information because it's an extra action to prepare for that for it. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> so how do I do that? <laughs> just, delete. <laughs> just delete a cred. Okay. Yeah, I'll get ask Jesse to do it because I think he's. Oh, I can. I'm on the sheet right yeah. now. I can. I can take the cred yeah. off of our thing. So we're oh, so the official secretary. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're down to zero cred, but we have twelve cred worth of materials. So yeah. Sweet. Oh my god. Yeah, so we need to the problem is we can't hold 12 cred worth like, <laughs> right? Cuz our, right. our our yeah, we can only hold four it looks like in our crew, you know, our crew can hold four and then individually how much can like we can't hold a ton either. Uh well, we don't Right now I think that you don't have any cred, you just have product. Right, we just have product. So I'm like once we sell it though, it's like what are we going <laughs> to you know, how do we hold <laughs> hold all this cred, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, I think what we'll do is probably we'll set it up next downtime. But I imagine so, every downtime you'll probably be selling some of this product, right? It won't just be like, eh, bye bye. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, roll. Let's see. So, how is it that you cozy up to the to this person and whatnot? So, I, I'm assuming that like this person who's a their mechanic 
you probably just like stalk them or whatever, right? Yeah, and the most wait awkward. to see like <laughs> to like where they go to socialize, and that's when you're going in, right? Like waiting. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. It's so, totally coincidence. Unless like you have another idea of how you'd be gathering information about this person, and I'm totally all ears. Like maybe you're hacking for it, or I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, kind of like a mix of both, where like uh, Whisper is kind of stalking them. Perhaps like um, I don't know. <laughs> a mixture of both. I'd like to stalk them. Yeah. I'd like to hack them. I would fucking do it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering like um, so, but I was thinking like perhaps I guess the dark net would have would be traceless. Um, but I don't know if there is some kind of like a quote footprint of where they last sort of like accessed it from or something, or if that's something I could get. Um, to sort of like narrow in on where they are and then scurry off and try and stalk them from that point. Well, it's, it's however you want to be able to get the information, right? I'm game for whatever oh, okay. strategy. Uh, yeah. I'm just throwing out ideas of, as to how you would get information on this person. Yeah, let's, let's stalk them. <laughs> Stalking them? Okay. So like <laughs> find out where their vice is etc right yeah yeah okay so how is what's the action that you think you're doing for that and let's um, gather information it up and and just in terms of like my own terminology when you refer to actions you're referring to like like sort of the insight prowess resolve kind of thing those are the attributes below it all those actions are your things so let's see your folk so yours would be like, are you hunting this person? Are you studying them? Are you surveying them? Are you oh, I see, I see. sneaking around to get the information? It's that kind of stuff. You would just proposition me with what you think your action is uh, for doing this and roll. Oh yeah, then I'm totally sneaking around. <laughs> sneaking around. So yeah. you're so that the what you think it is is that you're just trying to stay out of the way and tailing him. Right. Yeah, like newspapers with the holes for eyes and stuff. And... <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so then <laughs> you would roll your sneak, which on this sheet is prowl. Cool. And are you... Um, uh, is anybody helping or any of that stuff? We get two of us newspapers. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm definitely helping if it's a sneak jo sneaking job here. I think I'm using, you know, my muffler tech, you know, to make sure that we're not attracting unwanted attention as we go. But I'm definitely, yeah, I'll, I'll come along and, and just be uh, assisting. Cool. I feel like that comes from a place of, like, you don't trust me to do this very well. <laughs> nice. Okay, so roll two uh -huh. Ds and I guess... Be suspicious of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, and which of the which position do I put it down as? It doesn't matter. There's no. Okay. I don't think there's a risk. It'll just be gathering information. Okay. It'll be the quality of the information. So if you get something low, then it'll be like they notice you, but you get a little bit of stuff. Okay, and uh, I apologize for being really bad. It's mechanically. Do I get a bonus die for the help? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Five, so not perfect, but pretty good. So I think oh, that's a good bar for like shop shop people. Mm. He goes into like like what I would picture as like a biker bar, like a mechanical mechanics bar or whatever, but it's like got all the cycles out front and stuff. So obviously you can tell that he's like um, what you might call it, like super into cycles, which makes sense because he's the one that works on uh, their stuff. And so, what question do you want to to ask me for an almost complete answer? <laughs> oh gosh, um, there's a bunch of them at the bottom corner of your sheet on the bottom left side. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm happy to have crowdsource some questions. 
Um, yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, since I'm the math piece for our group, <laughs> so if you guys have anything in particular you would love to know from him, please let me know. Um, One of them is, how can I reveal X on your sheet? And Yeah. Yeah, so X could just be like, how can I get at this person, basically? Yeah, that's <laughs> the how can I get them to do X is a thing to do, like, that could be, like, how can I get them to, like, you know, not actually fix their shit when he's meant to fix it. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, how can I, how can I get this guy? How can I get him to <laughs> come to our side? I wonder if it's the just dark as, side. I wonder if it's as simple as cred. Well, wh what's your guys' reputation again? Daring, right? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think... Um... Yeah, I think we'll just go with the simple thing, which is like he is making a very modest amount of money and your rep on the street, especially after that job is that like, and maybe even he was there when um, their crew member that you terrorized uh, came in and like told them about how like maybe, maybe like scary or something you were or something like that. So I think there are, already kind of like intimidated by you but i think if you give them like decent amount of uh money then they'll uh they can be persuaded to do this thing i think there's like no love loss between them i think he gets paid very poorly for doing his work and unevenly <laughs> like w when money comes in he gets paid otherwise he doesn't get paid at all um so yeah i think he's got you know like a daughter and needs to support her and he's he's just not finding it so i think like one cred in this system i believe is like a, a week's worth of things so maybe like two cred like a promise of moving this product and then you get paid that kind of thing right i love this because i feel like whispers the least intimidating member of our crew because they're kind of like live and short so the fact that this guy is intimidated is, is very funny to me. Um, yeah, maybe you see this because you go into the bar and there's like, it's the typical thing where it has all the pictures of all the cycles and it goes from like the Harley Davidson, the gas thing from 100 years ago or whatever to like the cycles that we know today, the futuristic eco ones and all that kind of stuff. And I think you can tell that he's hurting for money because he orders a drink on tab and can't pay it again right but the the bar woman can't uh like doesn't refuse him and kind of like takes pity on him and pushes like a drink over to him and you can see him like pull out his futuristic wallet and like kind of look at his family and is like fuck my life basically oh <laughs> yeah so are you going to use this information to do a plan? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of plan do you guys want to execute? Um, Is it a deception thing? Is it a social connection? It kind of sounds like it might be a social connection. I think it's more of a social connection thing, yeah. I kind of sure. feel like it's a, you're like, we can help you, like, you can help us. Like, I foresee a very bright future for us to work together if you would be so partial to such an endeavor. Cool. So I think it's just like a continuous shot then from the gather information to you going up and, like, let him nurse his drink a little bit, right? And then hit him with the deets <laughs> or what? <laughs> to see how charming you are. But is yeah, it? Yeah, totally. But I think everybody. Or is everybody here or not? Because it might be a good group action thing, I'm just saying. <laughs> Please help me. I don't know what I'm doing. Silver, Silver's definitely there, at least. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I reckon maybe um, Haboob did the thing of, like, coming in earlier as a separate, like, you know, just sitting in there, like, beforehand out to look like they're a separate, like, you know, we're not all coming in all together, but... Yeah, so I'm like here at a side table or something. 
Cool. But I could easily draw attention to myself if need be. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So um, are you intimidating this person or are you swaying them or what are you? Oh, no, 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 no. I do not intimidate people. Well, I mean, I guess a group, right? That's a group. Okay. <laughs> if it's a group action, I don't know. I think it's a sway. I think that this we're we're trying to offer this guy something, something additional, right? Like, I'm not trying to scare him into it. Mm. Yeah, you don't want him to be the like right now. I think he, the, if you intimidated him, it'd be the same relationship as constructed chaos, right? Where yeah. he's like there because he needs the work but he's also compliant to get paid when he is able to because they would you know be pissed otherwise yeah maybe we're like expressly not intimidating him which is like yeah surprising to him <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm imagining the uh, you know a couple of us come up come up to the you know bar where he's sitting you know right as that you know crappy drink gets slid over to him you know for, uh, you know that pity drink and and I think instead we you know one of us comes up and I might be like you know bartender I'm like you know for uh, you know some some of that you know some of the good stuff for my friends and I and uh, and one for our new friend here cool. just to just to kind of open the open the door to a conversation. Nice. Okay. So is somebody leading the sway? Good. I'm not. Good. Yeah, I can do but that. No sway here. Well, it would just cost some people stress, right? You're still going to take the highest one, but it, who's, who's? It sounds doing like thing? folks actually leading it, right, and we're supporting it. Is that what sure. the deal is? It's what it looks like to me on screen, anyway. Sorry, uh, who's leading? Who who's leading it? But I was. I actually have an idea too. What if, like, uh, what if? you like that whole conversation with whisperer at the uh at the bar transitions to like you inviting him to a table where you're all at right but it's like playing a, like a game of like chance or whatever and you like continually lose to him and you're like <laughs> swinging him like that that kind of thing right yeah that sounds great <laughs> that'd be funny i love that until he like slowly, until you like slowly reveal who you are, and there's also the factor of like, oh, I had just heard about these people being very scary, but yeah. So who's who's leading it? Did you think, Lou? Uh, I thought it sounded like folk was um, was leading it, and we were supporting it. That sounds good to me. It doesn't like folk. You don't have to be worried about your um, like how many. Um, action dots you have in it because you'll still take the highest from everybody else, but they'll stress you out if that you get stressed out. Yeah, we all roll badly. <laughs> yeah. But in the fiction, I think it is you, right? Like you're the one that scope this place out. You call people. You're the one that brings them to the table. Blah blah blah. Right. I have a very inflated sense of confidence. This, I'm not worried at all. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> okay. So everybody <laughs> roll the sway. And we'll take the highest one. If you get uh, if you get a fail, then you you stress <laughs> folk out. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's a, well, I screwed me up. <laughs> yeah. So you take one stress, but uh, the highest roll is a five that you get. And so wait. So let me look here. Oh, and I didn't say which for me is just the default risky standard effect. So I think, let's see, what is he going to do? Oh, I know what he wants. Yeah. So he he like leans in kind of conspiratorially. This is maybe like an hour into the game of chance where you've finally like revealed who you are and the this thing, right? He's a little bit liquored up. He's like won a couple hands at 
poker or whatever you're playing. And he like, he says like, these people, they're not gonna, they're not gonna let me go willingly, right? Like I'm their mechanic. And I think even we can even establish that you taking the mechanic is the turf, right? Like the control that you're taking away in the sector is that like his actual services and stuff. We can just embody the turf in this one person for this specific thing. Um, but I think he's like, I need assurances that you're gonna protect my family. They need to be moved somewhere else, right? They know where I live. So he <laughs> I, think wants... they... <laughs> hmm? I feel like uh, the gesture is definitely just like, well, have I introduced you to my colleagues? And then, uh... <laughs> gesture towards Haboob and Silver <laughs> and J5. Like we can I think be... Haboob would very earnestly um, promise him that his family would be taken care of. And also, I want to remind you that you can resist consequences as well, too, which would be in maybe fitting with the dickish behavior that you've displayed so far, but it's up to you. <laughs> and it might stress you out. Who knows if you could handle it? <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that um, being there. Are you, are you guys happy with it? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean we actually have to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess the, I guess the question is: Are we like so far? We've only been like really antagonistic toward constructed chaos, and I mean that made sense in the fiction at this point, just just turf wise. Do we have any like? Are we true dirtbags who don't care about anybody, or is it just that we you know don't, or just that we have this beef with constructed chaos? But it's like no, we'll totally take this guy, you know, take care of this dude's family, you know, in order to get what we want, you know. I, I lean that direction, but I'm I'm open to being total total dirtbags. <laughs> no, I think her boob would uh, it's probably a soft spot for her boob as well. That she'll if he had have asked for more money or something, she would have been like, no, fuck you. But because he's asking for his family to be taken care of, that's right, like in line with her own philosophies. Right. Perfect. Can yeah. We, uh, why don't we take their family like? Uh, why don't we take their family like to our to our place, right? We've got yeah, quarters, well, I, we've got a workshop, we've got it's secure. Well, we that's tea. what I that's what I'm implying. Like, oh, a, yeah. I think the only place you have is your place. But I also think that mm -hmm. it is making explicit that like when this guy doesn't show up for work or whatever, and they go looking, it's not going to be maybe like it'll take a week or two or something. But there's going to be sightings of these people, like. Yeah, eventually it's going to be traced back that you're the one with the mechanic and you're like the addition of having the family is like so, heat ish. Okay. So are we just taking the mechanic? Is that what we're trying to do here? Cause I'm trying to, I'm failing to see how that's actually going to hurt constructed chaos. They just find another mechanic, right? Like quickly. Well, I think that they just wouldn't be able to, right? I think mechanics are one scarce too. They okay. don't have money to pay them. And so I, I'm I'm thinking the turf is you taking this very needed resource that they have right now away from them. Gotcha. I okay. think we're essentially taking him like after they've um paid him. Like they paid him to fix all of their shit and then we've taken him and he doesn't do the stuff. <laughs> yeah, sure. It can be both of those things. I just want to make sure that we're tying like, I think normally, like, I really like the idea of taking the turf, but I want to make sure that we're engaging the mechanics to get the fiction that we want. And the, the this operation was supposed to be about taking turf. And I'm not sure that the second part of this is on you guys, right? It's on this guy. So I think if we make him the embodiment of the turf, it makes more sense in the fiction for me. Because for a little while there, I was getting like a little bit confused as to what you guys were going for. I don't know if it was just me or not, but I was like, okay, so we're going for this mechanic, but we're signaling out turf, but maybe it's an acquire an asset. So I'm I'm trying to make it so that the, the fiction makes sense again. And I think if we make mechanics super important people and we're taking this resource away from it, then that counts as the turf. And I also think it still works because turf is strong and weak hold with you guys, right? 
And that can totally work for this person, right? Who is now your resource. He could be gotten too, just the same way as if you had taken a building, right? Plus, is that, hmm? Oh, I, I had a dog what Aaron said too, where like he's perhaps an enthusiast of Ari and it sounds like Ari is like kind of a coveted uh, skill oh, yeah. in this area as well, um, given that it's got that kind of like stratified class thing going on. Um, yeah. So is everybody on the same page fictionally with me now that I've, yeah. yeah. Aaron, is that what you were thinking too? Because this was originally your plan, so I just want to check <laughs> in with you. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, yeah. And and the confusion is, I think, simply because I just don't know the mechanics of Blades well enough to be able to say, like, I'm trying to get turf. So <laughs> I'm right. just describing it, like, fictionally, and then hopefully others that are a bit more knowledgeable can say, what you are doing is this. You're going to have to roll X, Y, and Z and justify it in these ways. So right. forgive me if I'm uh, sort of no worries. out of field. No, totally. And I think, like, my predilection to want to have us follow the fiction right away is what prompted me to not like step in and be like what are you actually doing and that kind of thing but i think mm -hmm. we've come to like a good place where we got the fiction that you wanted we got the operation that we wanted and it like all tied together it just took us like a little bit here but yeah because i think what I, I think it can be a little bit like when you're used to playing like more straight powered by the apocalypse things it's heaps easier to just be like i do this and everyone's like you know there's a really obvious trigger that it's like and now we're doing this but it's like there's a bit more like talking about rules and like what exactly are you trying to do and that yeah. like, especially while you're learning the like while we're all learning the how the game works i think yeah yeah there's a little bit more structure to this one but so i think you guys agree they essentially are going to move in soon after he like sabotages it right like i think you plan it so that it's like and not too obvious where it's like your bikes blow up and he's gone and fuck you <laughs> right like it's a little bit better than that you it's like the only the only uh reason it's not a full success is that you need to take in these people which kind of pu puts a bullseye on you everything else works totally fine yeah like uh, maybe they find out after we've gone in and gotten involved with them that it was actually us that would because they see his family like around our shop or something that's a pretty good consequence to me totally yeah exactly and um to to wrap it up let's do um i want to have like a short tiny scene with you guys uh, delivering the info to the flicker as well that you uh, agreed to do before so uh maybe you guys well, let's just have them all come like uh, a flicker is coming into the store again so we have like the same throwback to the scene in the beginning where it's like ding dong like that kind of stuff right and instead of like a customer or whatever we see a flicker and they're marked by like these sort of tron legacy type coats right where they can flicker and turn transparent invisible type thing ghost in the shell and you're uh, passing along the message, which I think is just like, looks like a mini disc or something like that, right? And then you can take away the one rep. Um, and it's because some people know that a flicker came and you act, are acting like a, a mouse, mouthpiece, essentially, because you said you, you were going to do the job, right? So cool.